first and foremost, I want to be clear, I'm going to follow the law. What the law says is what is going to dictate how I and I hope all of my colleagues proceed in this moment, in particular around thorny issues like this one. Now, in following the law, that means being very careful, making decisions not from a political standpoint, but from a legal standpoint, and asking questions like about due process. Now, typically, a conviction is used to determine the facts and, and solidify the facts when someone is deemed ineligible, when there are perhaps um, thorny issues at play. If we're not going to predicate this on a conviction under the law, then what and how do we ensure due process? How do we define insurrection or rebellion? Who makes that determination? And what potential guardrails do we need to have in place so that this is not this precedent that could be created uh, if uh, this legal interpretation is adopted? Uh, how can we avoid that being weaponized in the future in this era of false equivalency uh, by officials who want to block candidates from the ballot simply because they disagree with them politically? So mm. this is a thorny, challenging issue, but, and, and I should emphasize that, it, particularly those of the secretaries in battleground states, I'm going to be talking with Al Schmidt in Pennsylvania, with Cisco Aguilar in Nevada, with Brad Raffensperger, because we know, in particular in our states, the impact that this decision can have, not just in our, among our voters, but in the nation. And so we're taking this seriously, we're looking at it carefully, and we're weighing all of the thorny issues at play.